So we have John N9MYC will be presenting about amateur radio at scouting STEM events. John was licensed in 1991. He is currently the emergency management coordinator for Illinois. John enjoys DX and contesting. He says that there are two contacts that still excite him. He worked Edmondson Scott Base on the South Pole and a Rushman Cosmonaut in the International Space Station with a 50 with 50 watts in a J pole. John is one of those lucky folks who gets to play radio at work. John is going to give us some insight into working a STEM event and getting kids excited about amateur radio, which is good because I have a three and a five year old that I need to get into this. That way they're having more fun. All right. Uh, he will tell us about his recent adventure doing STEM event at uh, College of DuPage, DuPage in Illinois. All right. We can all see you. Let me uh, see if I can figure out how to make that full screen. I should know this. You know what? We'll just go with it. Okay, well, thank you very much. I uh, very much appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak with you tonight. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so uh, about a month and a half ago, the uh, Boy Scouts in uh, the Chicago area contacted the Illinois section manager, Tom Beebe, and asked if we could do a presentation at a STEM event that the Three Fires Council was having at the College of DuPage. Um, DuPage County is the second most populous county in Illinois. We're located directly west of, uh, of uh, Cook County and Chicago. Um, actually, O'Hare Airport, a small portion lies within our county. So we're, we're right next to uh, Chicago and uh, Cook County. So uh, Tom Beebe, our section manager, was hoping to attend the event uh, this past Saturday, but uh, we had a large ham fest in Peoria, Illinois, and uh, he was going to attend that as the section manager. So I'm one of the assistant section managers up here in Northeast Illinois. So he asked if I could cover the event. So uh, I uh, reached out to my uh, communications unit, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a little bit. But uh, in my role at DuPage County Emergency Management, uh, I oversee our commu, and we've got 18 members of the commu. And uh, you see pictured here myself on the right and Mike Wilson on the left. Um, Mike is one of our commu members, longtime member of our emergency management agency. And uh, as you can see with the shirt, he is a Boy Scout leader as well. So he uh, jumped right in and uh, volunteered to assist me. There we go. A little bit about my background. I've been licensed since 1991. I'm currently a general. I enjoy DX, uh, Skywarn, Aries, among uh, many other things in uh, 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 ham radio. Um, I'm the former emergency communications chair with the Schomburg Amateur Radio Club. I'm uh, uh, assistant section manager with the ARRL Illinois section since July of 2020. And I'm a, uh, in my, my, my real world, I'm a retired police police sergeant, uh, retired in 2014. I did that for 30 years. My wife told me to get a uh, real job. So I am now an emergency management coordinator in DuPage County. Been doing that for almost seven years. Um, one of my adjunct duties is that as communications team lead, in that role, I uh, have a team of 18 uh, individuals who are, except for two of us, we're, we're full-time members. The other 16 are volunteers. We uh, operate a unit called ITEX-4. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the presentation. We are in the process of building a new unit for the state of Illinois called RapidCom-4. Again, I'll share that at the end. Um, I am a state-recognized communications unit leader, a COMEL. I'm a uh, DHS and this is certified COMEL instructor, uh, COMT training, meaning I am finishing up my uh, position task book after having taken the class, uh, income trainee, incident communications manager trainee, again, finishing up the uh, task book after taking the class. And I am also a DHS and CISA certified uh, um, instructor for OXCOM. So what I want to share with you tonight is the main reason that I was uh, asked to join you tonight. And I want to talk about the uh, Boy Scouts STEM event that we did the presentation with uh, last weekend. Uh, 
adding on to that, I want to talk to you just a little bit about amateur radio field deployment preparation, and then uh, just uh, wrap up real quickly with uh, what we do on the professional side with uh, the uh, DuPage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management Communications Unit. So when uh, Tom reached out to me, he basically put me in touch with the folks from the Boy Scouts and said, hey, they want you guys to come and share amateur radio with scouts. So uh, no, no further you know, direction other than that. So uh, wanted to do something interesting, informative, and interactive with the kids. Uh, I wanted to engage scouts, engage parents, and engage scout leaders. I um, wanted to show them an a, uh, example of field deployment and the capabilities of amateur radio, especially in emergency situations, and most importantly, have fun with the kids. So there were uh, two different locations that we could uh, do our presentation at. There, there was an inside venue, and they were doing a lot of build things with the kids and the robotics and you know things like that. And there was a, a, a parking lot. So taking a gamble, we asked to have an outside location. That way we could uh, better set up antennas and things along those lines. So fortunately, we were lucky and weather was fantastic that day. But uh, we were provided with two tables um, from the scouts. We brought along everything else. So except for the tables that you see here in the, in the two folding chairs, everything else we uh, brought along ourselves. So what we set up for the kids, we wanted to have some deploy, uh, displays, wanted to have some uh, information more for the parents and the kids and have some interactive activities for the kids. So this is one of our two tables that you see here. We had some uh, books on display. We had some handouts um, of the uh, display items. We had actually uh, worked out great that the uh, most recent issue of QST, the cover that you see in the top center here was uh, um, titled Young Hams on the Air. We had a copy of the QST out there moving off to the left had a copy of amateur radio satellites for beginners we could talk to them about uh, satellites and and how uh, hams can work them uh, a little bit about the morse code from our old friend gordon west and uh, some of his uh, uh, code cds um, going off to the right side a little something about basic an antennas because we had a, a homebrew um, dipole there and then uh, if somebody was interested um, on getting a license uh, we, we had a copy of a uh, of uh, the current issue of the uh, tech question and answers book um, we, we shared with the kids the fact that uh, both Mike and I had been licensed a long time, and uh, um, my boys are both grown now, but both of them were licensed at the age of 12. Um, Mike's son is currently in scouting. He's not yet licensed, but uh, interested in amateur radio. Um, some of the handouts that we had available were some of the ARRL handouts, uh, starting on the left and working clockwise, uh, amateur radio serving your community, talking a little bit about you know things like Aries and, and, and public service um, up at the top. Exactly what is ham radio? What do amateur radio operators do? What can you do? And then on the uh, bottom right, okay, how do you get involved and how do you order a copy of the book and, and get a license test? Uh, I found a uh, article, amateur radio in the STEM classroom. It was a, it was a good article to share. Obviously, uh, some of the younger scouts probably wouldn't be interested, but knowing that we would have uh, parents and scout leaders coming through, um, I had copies of this article available as well. So one of the interactive things that we had uh, um, on the table was a two meter 440 um, radio. And I just had it sitting right out there with a, uh, a speaker next to it and a, uh, a battery. And the battery was connected with the Anderson dipole. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Anderson power pole connector. And uh, we, we let kids make contacts on, uh, on a local repeater. Um, I, I'll show you some more pictures in a little bit of the uh, um, the uh, tripods and the PVC masts that we had. But uh, on the left-hand side of this picture, you see at the top of that mast is a uh, two-meter 440 mag mount that we have up there. And on the right side of this picture, on the state of Illinois, up at the top right-hand side is a... Uh, 
kind of a red circle area. Um, that is an area that is very well covered by a repeater up here in Northeast Illinois, the K9DX uh, repeater, uh, 444875. It is on a tower at about 300 feet up and has seven or eight um, uh, receive sites. So we have excellent coverage throughout Northeast Illinois, uh, eight, nine, 10 county area. Um, we hold our uh, AWRL only section Northeast only net every Thursday night on this repeater. And we regularly get check-ins from six or seven counties. So it's got excellent coverage. Um, I sent out a Facebook post on a number of different uh, amateur radio uh, Facebook pages and uh, amateur radio clubs in Northeast Illinois, letting them know that Mike and I would be doing this event last Saturday and encouraging them to uh, either be listening or to reach out to us. Um, Mike uh, contacted uh, a gentleman that has a Boy Scout call sign K2BSA and received his approval to utilize the sign, uh, the, the um, a call sign for the event. So we were K2 um, BSA slash nine for the event, both on uh, on the two meter 440 and on HF. And uh, it, it, it was great because uh, I might be talking to some kids or parents and all of a sudden somebody would be calling us on the 440 repeater, just reaching out to us. And it, it was kind of a thrill for the parents and the kids to hear people calling us. Uh, we were able to set up uh, the kids to do some third party uh, conversations with some of the hams that were checking in probably had five or six different folks that checked in with us uh, during the day and of course we reached out for uh, radio tests and things like that on both of the tables we had a, uh, a morse keyer set up and next to the morse keyer we had um, the morse code it was a eight by ten page laminated with uh, the letters and the numbers and uh, dots and dashes next to it and uh, we would explain to the kids you know why people would use morse code we would encourage them to try the keyer we'd show them how to use it we had both a straight key and a, a, a double paddle and it, it was kind of fun because you know I, we, we would show Show them, you know, here's how you send a uh, send a letter and a couple of letters in a row and so on. And I mean, we're talking kids that are 10, 11 years old and we would tell them, OK, you know, what's your name? OK, my name is Amy. My name is Bob. OK, well, look at the sheet here and then go ahead and do the dots and the dashes to, to do your name. And they'd go through that and they'd get it. And all of a sudden I'd hear them kind of banging away doing the Morse code. And at first thought, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, it's just a kid just banging away and, you know, dot, dash, dot, dash. And all of a sudden I'm looking closer and I'm listening and they're doing the Morse code. They got the finger on the uh, laminated paper and they're going A, B, C, D. And we had a couple of kids that went through the entire alphabet and would just banged it away. And it, it, I mean, for me, that was one of the bigger thrills of the day. Just see the kids just kind of take to it like a, uh, like a duck to water. Uh, we also had a, uh, a, uh, 21 inch monitor there with a, um, uh, a rolling PowerPoint that I had. And on the left side of the screen here, these are all titles of different YouTube videos that I located that ran from anywhere from yeah, two and a half minutes to you know, maybe 10 minutes or so. And I set them up in a loop and I had them continually running on the monitor there. Um, the idea being if we had a lot of people coming at one time, you know, it was just Mike and myself. So if, if, if we couldn't be actually, you know, engaging with a with a child or a parent, they could be, you know, looking and listening to some of the things that we're talking on the uh, on the video there. On the other table, we had a uh, HF station set up, and Mike ran the uh, HF station. Uh, what you see here, Mike is the uh, control operator. They're holding the mic for the young scout doing a third party contact, and the uh, scout leader that is kneeling there actually it was kind of a fun thing I, I i've known this gentleman for a couple of years had no idea that he was actually involved in scouting he is actually the president of uh college of dupage and he came walking up early in the morning just to say hi and i looked at him and i'm like Mr. President, how are you, sir? Had no idea he was involved in scouting. And uh, he saw this young uh, scout uh, doing a, a, a CUSO with, uh, with Mike. And he, he stopped down to, to listen to the, the, the mom in the background there is watching her, uh, her son. I mean, it, it was really fun to have some of these kids uh, doing, uh, doing the radio contacts. We actually had uh, 
one dad and uh, their uh, their son mentioned that, oh, yeah, we've talked on ham radio before. We talked to Santa Claus. And I know a lot of clubs uh, do the uh, the Santa Claus Cusos and that. So it was, it was kind of fun to have them uh, them out there. So I'll show you a little bit more about our antenna setup there, but it was very bare bones and basic. Um, the highest point of the antenna was 10 feet. Um, it was a dipole and I had it cut to, uh, to, uh, 40 meters and, um, uh, the, the lower ends were probably yeah, maybe six or eight feet. So, I mean, it was not way up there. And if you look at this grid map here, every location where you see a yellow circle is somewhere that we had a um, contact with. And you can see we went, uh, and, and the red X there right by Lake Michigan is where we were located. So we, we, we talked to somebody actually uh, just across the river from you guys in, in uh, I don't recall if it was Madison or St. Clair County, but somebody uh, down on the, uh, the east side of St. Louis. Um, it, we went as far north as northern uh, Wisconsin, as far southwest as in the Texas, and as far east as Baltimore and, uh, and uh, Pittsburgh and New Jersey. Um, we did a couple of uh, POTA contacts, uh, parks on the air. Um, the Baltimore contact was, was kind of fun. Uh, there is a, uh, a Baltimore Maritime Museum, and they had a special event going on from an amateur radio club affiliated with the first nuclear maritime ship it was built in the 1950s and it was the first maritime civilian vessel built under nuclear power so i, I i'm kind of sharing this with you trying to tie things into the um, amateur radio uh, preparedness and Aries type thing that, you know, we're operating off a of generator power with a hundred Watts and a, uh, a dipole home brewed with a uh, 14 gauge stranded wire, electrical wire, um, no more than 10 feet off the ground. And we worked pretty much the entire Eastern part of the United States. So it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to be able to do that. And, and we had this map actually laying on the table. Um, if you look closely, you can see a green dot inside of the yellow circles. Uh, Mike put those dots onto the map so that way he could show the parents and the kids that came by who we have already talked to. I just added the uh, yellow circles to make it a little bit easier for you to see here on the uh, presentation. So the, uh, the antennas that we put together, um, these are something that I kind of created myself trying to, uh, to use the mindset of quick and easy, um, not only emergency field deployment, but also for um, uh, special events and, and public service and things like that. So I've got three commercially purchased uh, television antenna tripods. And uh, with that, I built um, uh, wooden bases for them. They're just three pieces of uh, one by two lumber that I painted and just drilled a hole so that way I could uh, use a, a screw and a wing nut to uh, attach the uh, tripod to it. The masts are um, PVC and uh, I, I have them cut into three foot sections and I'll show you why in just a minute. So uh, right here in the foreground is one, right behind the tent is the um, middle one where we have the balin attached. And if you kind of look right in front of the tree, kind of to the left of this close mast and to the right of the middle mast, you see another kind of white uh, pole going up there. That is the mast for the, uh, for the, uh, the far end. So we were able to easily deploy the, um, the uh, 40 meter dipole, which I think was about 124 feet as, uh, as I cut it there. Um, on the picture on the right here 
is the center mast. Uh, you can see the dipole, I'm sorry, the balin hanging from near the top. And on the very top is where I have the uh, mag mount for the uh, two meter 440. I just took a little metal plate and screwed it onto the top of the um, PVC there. And that way the mag mount would just kind of pop on top and, and sit right there. So this here is what my um, preparation equipment looks like. Um, starting on the left-hand side is about a three and a half foot duffel bag. And the um, sections, the, the wood base sections for all three tripods easily fit in there. And again, that's another reason why I cut the, uh, cut the uh, PVC to, to three foot sections. So that way they will fit in there um, just to the lower right of that black bag you see a couple of white um, connector pvcs with uh, orange tape on it those are the ones that i use to connect the pieces of pvc together um, i'm going to kind of pause here for a second on the equipment to kind of share a lesson learned from me um, i am not the most uh, home improvement type guy. So when I first went and grabbed some PVC, I forgot, yeah, you know, the, the, the one inch is kind of wobbly. I'll go ahead and get a two inch. Well, when I get the two inch home, guess what? The two inch didn't fit inside of the, um, inside of the uh, tripod. So I had bought two different tripods and realized that one would only fit the one inch, but the other one would fit a one and a half. So that's something that you want to look at if you're going to build something like this. One and a half is a good sturdy um, uh, size. And you, you buy the, you know, Walmart has them for like 32 bucks. You buy the right tripod for uh, 32 bucks at one and a half inch. And you're going to fit the one and a half inch PVC in there. And you're going to have a nice, nice um, solid uh, mount there. So... Obviously, the concern is wanting to have a, a, a tripod that's not going to pitch over if it's windy or something. Um, the the base gives it a pretty sturdy um, uh, situation, but want to make sure if it is really windy, you don't want them tipping over. So if you look at the the uh, that kind of red and black bag there at the bottom, you see uh, some green uh, paracord, you see a bag that has some silver tent stakes, and then you see the larger tent stakes. So if I'm setting these things up on the grass somewhere, and it's not really windy, well, I don't even need the uh, the green pieces of wood. I can just use the, uh, the metal stakes and put them through the screw holes at the bottom of the tripod, and you know what, they'll be just fine. If I use the uh, wooden base for it and it's sitting on the grass somewhere and I'm concerned that, you know, it's going to tip over, what I can do is I can use the paracord, cut it to maybe, you know, three or four feet, tie it to an upper section of the tripod, tie it to the orange stakes there and pop the orange stakes into the ground you know, three, four feet away and give it some good stabilization. In the, uh, in the uh, black and red tool bag there, I've got a plastic uh, box that has got the uh, um, screws and the wing nuts. I've got a hammer in there to be able to hammer in the uh, stakes into the ground and, and things like that. Um, at the top center section of the uh, photo here, is a larger uh, stand-up black type duffel bag. And that's where I bring along the antennas, the coax, uh, uh, extension cords, paracord, um, things like that. So I, at the bottom, I've got two different dipoles. One is cut to 3905, which is the 80 meter Aries frequency here in Illinois. And the other one is cut to the 40 meter Aries frequency. So again, you know, hopefully, if I cut them right and I've tested them with an antenna analyzer, um, they're pretty much spot on. You can just hook them up for, again, Aries in Illinois and not have to mess around with a uh, with uh, being able to tune them in. Um, and then on the right-hand side is an example of one of the uh, the tripods. I, I have them marked with some uh, yellow and orange tape, just, you know, simply for visibility. And that's why I painted the uh, the wooden bases green. Again, you know, trying to go along with safety and that. But I, I, I tried to come up with a design that is uh, easy to carry, easy to deploy, and you know, thinking along the lines of not only an emergency Aries type deployment, but also doing a uh, a fun deployment, a quick field day, um, doing a parks on the air, something along those lines. 
As I mentioned, I was going to share with you a little bit about uh, what I am most fortunate to do um, professionally. Uh, this photo here is a couple members of our communications unit, and the uh, trailer sitting behind them is called an ITEX, um, LRA Transportable Emergency Communication System. There are 10 of them strategically located around the state of Illinois. It's got a satellite dish on it, so we can do uh, um, Wi-Fi and, and a VoIP telephone service. It's got a 50 foot tower laying across the top. Um, it's got radios in there from VHF low to the VHF, UHF 7, 800. It's got a 800 repeater. It's got two UHF repeaters. Uh, we've got a 700 megahertz suitcase repeater. It has an ACU 1000 um, uh, patch panel in it so we can patch anything together. Um, this is towed by a Ford F-550 pickup truck. And as I said, there's 10 of them in the state of Illinois, and we host the one for Northeast Illinois, but we can get dispatched anywhere around the state to uh, provide communications support for anything that is needed. Uh, we've had 18 members on our ComU at DuPage OHSEM. Two of us are full-time, and the other 16 are all volunteers. Um, the picture on the right hand side is an exercise we did and it's, it's an example of, of what we can do. You've got the ITEX pickup truck in the front, the, the trailer in the center, and on the right is what's called a UCP, a unified command post, and the state of Illinois has 15 of them, again, strategically located around the state of Illinois. Um, we are fortunate in DuPage County that we've got both of those assets in DuPage County. Uh, we at OHSEM host ITEX-4, and the Sheriff's Department across the street host uh, the Unified Command Post number three there. Um, but uh, we do basically all the tech work for them. So any repairs that need to be done, any new radio installations or anything like that, our uh, commu does for the Sheriff's Office. Um, I, I know I'm straying a little bit from amateur radio, but I'm not straying from amateur radio. Um, the picture on the left here was a training session that we did at night. Um, our team does work in training sessions twice a month, uh, the first and third Monday of the month. And this night here, we're actually uh, working with ham radio. So we had a dipole that we deployed off the 50 foot tower and we've got uh, a ham radio set up there. And I, we were working the East Coast that night. I can't remember if it was Pennsylvania or something like that. But I mean, beautiful contact from uh, outside of Chicago with a dipole hanging off of a 50 foot tower on our, uh, on our trailer here and uh, doing ham radio. What you see here is a um, example of a new vehicle that is going to be uh, built here in Illinois. Um, the vehicle itself does exist. The graphics on there are just a mock-up that we are currently working on. But the state of Illinois is looking to develop a next generation um, rapid communications unit. And uh, my team uh, was selected by the state to actually build this unit out. So it is going to have pretty much almost all the same capabilities as the ITEX trailer, but in a shorter, smaller, quicker, faster, um, whatever you want to call it unit. Um, ITEX takes about 45 minutes to get out the door. It takes three people to roll. Um, once arriving on scene, it takes about an hour to set up again with three people before it's operational. The goal of this vehicle here is to be able to basically roll out the door like a fire truck. We get the call, we hop in it, and we go. We get on the scene, we flip a couple switches, and within 10 minutes, this thing is up and running. If the incident is going to be longer of duration, um, then we can call back for the ITEX truck and trailer and bring them out to replace this unit. Um, again, you don't. You know, all you see here is just the, the, the vehicle and the... Um, and the uh, potential graphics, we haven't put anything in it yet. We're just kind of finishing the design. Basically, the state of Illinois came up with the plan of what they wanted. They bought the equipment. And then after they picked us, they said, you guys figure out how to do it. So we are in the process of designing um, how to lay out everything from the electricity to uh, installing the radio equipment, um, the antennas, the, 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 the whole nine yards. It will have a 30-foot a pneumatic mast uh, in the vehicle. And 
again, pretty much almost all the same equipment that you have on ITEX. Um, in addition to all the equipment that I mentioned earlier on ITEX, and in this vehicle, we've got a lot of what we call grab-and-go equipment. We've got 40 Starcom radios, which Starcom is the, the uh, state of Illinois trunked radio system throughout the state. Um, we've got uh, VHF, UHF, and 7800 single band radios that we can uh, we can deploy out. We've got a tactical 7800 repeater. We've got an ICRI box, which is a incident command radio interface where you can take portable radios and patch portable radios together. Um, we've got uh, air band radios, marine band radios, so we can deploy them out. So, and again, we've got amateur radio. So there's amateur radio in, in both of these units. And I'm I'm just kind of tying those things together. Um, there was just recently, about two, three weeks ago, a statewide communications exercise that was part of a statewide emergency management and an Illinois National Guard exercise. And in addition to all of the various public safety capabilities that we have on ITEX, Amateur radio was a part of that. So um, uh, please don't think that amateur radio is not a part of a, a public safety plan. Um, I, I talked to our SWIC, the statewide interoperability coordinator, um, just a couple of weeks ago because I am working to develop an OXCOM unit um, as an add-on to our communications unit. And our SWIC in Illinois is wholeheartedly in favor of, um, of OXCOM and getting amateur radio involvement in com use throughout the state. So I want to share one last thing with you again as a, as a complete tie-in to all of this. Um, this photo was taken on the DuPage County government campus back in 2017. And what you see here is a uh, communications exercise. The state of Illinois does an annual communications exercise for all of what they call the strategic technology reserve assets, the unified command posts and the IPEX teams. Um, but back in 2017, they said, you know what, we want to pull in amateur radio. So I was a member of the, uh, the planning team for this exercise, and uh, I designed the exercise that we utilized up in Northeast Illinois, which is kind of what you see here. So the, the exercise issue was a catastrophic failure of communications within Northeast Illinois. Radio systems were down, telephones, cell phones were down. How do you... Um, get things working again. How do people contact police and fire for help? How do you get police and fire dispatch? Things along those lines. So what we have here, if you look at the kind of the top center of the picture, you see the ITEX trailer there, the small square box with the 50 foot trailer. Going clockwise off to the right is another small trailer with a uh, about a 30-foot tower. That is from a group called ISMA, Illinois Emergency Services Management Association. And that is an EMAT trailer, Emergency Management Assistance Team. So that essentially is a portable emergency operations center. Great technology in there, uh, big TVs and desks and, and so on and so forth. This is kind of an operations area. Moving off to the, uh, the right-hand side, you see a maroon pickup with a trailer there. Um, that trailer is from the Wheaton Community Radio Amateurs. Wheaton is a, a town that we are, our um, uh, county campus is located in, in Northeast Illinois. And WCRA has this public safety, tr uh, public services trailer. And uh, the uh, DuPage Aries worked in conjunction with the WCRA out of that trailer. Moving across to the uh, bottom left uh, of the picture, you see a couple of tents there. We use those for basically our briefing and, and check-in area off on the left-hand side probably at least for me the most important part of equipment that day that was our good friends at the uh, Salvation Army they had the canteen out there and this was in uh, the first week in November it was cold it was rainy we had hot coffee and chili and all the good stuff to keep us happy and so on and Salvation Ar Army is a great partner and then moving again toward the at the top there you can see the big unified command post so what we did to uh, to function this exercise is we took uh, ARIES members and we assigned them to police departments and fire departments around the county. Again, with the idea being is that citizens could have been notified ahead of time. 
if you have a problem and communications are down, go to your closest police station and fire station. And there they would find an amateur radio operator. And there they could say, I need the police. I need the fire. This is what the problem is. The hams then um, would call in to the trailer on the right-hand side there, the WCRA trailer, and they would pass on the information. Here's what is needed. Here's where it's needed. Aries folks within the trailer would take the information down. Moving up uh, on the top right-hand side there to the EMAT trailer, that's where we had uh, public safety dispatchers. There's a group in Illinois called ILTERT, Illinois Tactical Emergency Radio Team, I think. I'm not positive. Basically, it's, it's, a, it's a mutual aid response team of public safety dispatchers. So we had dispatchers in there. So the Amateur radio operators with Aries in the lower right trailer would then pass on the information to the dispatchers in the top right trailer. Here's the address. Here's the problem. Police, fire, ambulance, what have you. They would then radio the request into one of our local PSAPs, public safety answering points or 911 centers. For the purpose of the exercise, we had what we call a sim cell, a simulated uh, cell inside of the unified command post. And that was acting as the PSAP. So they would then pass on the message to the PSAP. Here's where police, fire, et cetera, are needed. And then ostensibly they would be dispatched from there. I, as the uh, exercise director, was also operating out of the unified command post. So initially when this all got up and running, again, as part of the exercise, you know, we simulated that my ITEX trailer was not ready to go yet. So, okay, Aries folks, how do you get the information from your trailer to the other trailer? It's called a runner. You hand a piece of paper to somebody, you go down to that trailer, you hand it to them, get the information. As my guys, again, as part of the simulated exercise, were there and getting out radio caches, they went, <coughs> pardon me, they went and they handed out radios on either a VTAC or a UTAC, one of the national uh, interop frequencies. And they put them in the trailer for the Aries folks and the trailer for the um, dispatchers there. Now they could pick up a radio. And they could talk to each other. So, again, going back to the lower right, the Aries folks are getting a call in on a ham radio. Police, fire, ambulance are needed at 123 Main Street. And then they would pick up the other radio on the VTAC or the UTAC, and they would call the dispatcher in the EMAT trailer, pass that information on to them. While that was happening, my guys on the uh, ITEX trailer were setting up telephone systems. And they actually wound up then stringing telephone lines between the vehicles. So that way they could actually just pick up a telephone that we deployed inside the trailers and they could talk on telephone between the vehicles that were, that were there. So we had folks from ILEAS, the Illinois Law Enforcement uh, Emergency Assistance System, the people that oversee the ITEX and the, the UCPs there. Uh, we had folks from IEMA, Illinois Emergency Management Agency watching. We even had, as some of you might recognize the name, John Peterson from uh, DHS CISA, who is basically the uh, Oxcom guru. John flew out from, uh, uh, from Washington, D.C. to observe this exercise. And uh, the, uh, the state liked how well the exercise went that they replicated the, the next year throughout the state of Illinois. Now, please don't think that uh, um, we came up with this idea of, of putting uh, ham radio operators at police stations and fire stations. That was actually something that was done by many communities back in 2000 when people were concerned about uh, the, the millennium and everything crashing at, at, at that time. So there were many communities that did that exact thing on the millennium. So what I wanted to do, even though I was initially um, asked to, to speak to you about STEM, you know, I, we, I wanted to kind of share with you that, you know, we, we were trying to engage kids and, and parents and, and scout leaders into amateur radio, but also trying to show them the, the abilities and the resilience of it. And, you know, wanted to let you know that, you know, amateur radio does have a very real 
and, and viable partnership with public safety, even to, to this day. Um, just this afternoon in my role as the uh, commu lead in DuPage County, I had about a 90 minute meeting with our new emergency coordinator coming into DuPage County. And we talked about a whole array of different things from training to exercises, to building Oxcom into my commu and, uh, and really bolstering the abilities of, of amateur radio in, uh, in DuPage County. So I um, want to share one last thing about DuPage County Amateur Radio Emergency uh, Services, um, their website, DuPageCountyAries.org. They also have just recently acquired a trailer, as you see here, and just finished the build out of the trailer a couple of weeks ago. So that way they can uh, de deploy it for Oxcom support to Aries or to uh, DuPage County um, Emergency Management. Um, finally, I want to issue a cordial invitation to all of you. Um, Illinois Aries um, hosts a uh, HF net on the first and third Sundays of every month. And our section manager and section emergency coordinator are very much interested in, in, in getting our neighboring states uh, participation. So if you are interested at 4.30 p.m. Central Time on the first and third Sunday of the month on 3.905, um, please Please, please check in and join us. If you are not uh, um, licensed for HF and you are interested in listening in uh, the Echolink capabilities, um, it is simulcast on Echolink node 824404. And so much for the uh, final shameless plug. Um, my name is John Nubble, and my call is N9MYC. You can contact me at N9MYC at ARRL.net. And that all being said, I am more than happy to entertain any uh, questions or discussions that all of you uh, might have. Impressive setup, but uh, no questions. Um, all right, I don't. I had something I thought of earlier. Uh, I see you guys have a lot of 800 and 900 megahertz. Is there a reason that's where uh, professional wireless is as opposed to being in the lower bands? Um, you know, it, it, well, with, with um, uh, Starcom, Starcom is all in the 7 and 800 megahertz uh, uh, range. And pretty much all of DuPage County public safety right now is on Starcom. So, um, you know, that, that's one reason that our commu and, and, and all of the, um, all of the uh, ITEX teams and UCPs have got radio caches that are on that. Because, uh, again, at least in Northeast Illinois, I know once we get kind of uh, into the central and southern parts of the state, it's more in the um, larger metropolitan areas, but some of the more rural counties. Uh, Counties have not is migrated as much to Starcom, but like I said, in our county, every police and fire agency is on Starcom, so that's uh, seven eight hundred. Now, the way we have it in in DuPage County is we've got a lot of dual band radios. the uh, The police are on currently on dual band UHF and seven eight hundred, and the reason being is previously the legacy uh, repeaters were all UHF for the police, so they've got the old UHF repeaters in the radios in the event of a Starcom trunk system failure, they can fall back on the UHF repeaters. But uh, the county just finished uh, installing um, about a dozen 800 megahertz repeaters around the county. So they are not going to be the fallbacks. So the county is just looking to purchase new radios. Um, DuPage County has about 2,500 police radios and about 1,600 fire department radios. So you're, you're talking between three and 4,000 uh, handheld radios that the county has. So the, the new um, police radios will be just single band 7, 800 because, again, they'll be either trunk or if they have to fall back onto a repeater, they'll go out onto an 800 repeater. Um, the fire department is currently on VHF and 7, 800 dual band. Um, they will stay there because the fire department 
department still utilize um, both the VHF firegrounds and also the legacy repeaters, which are the backup repeaters, are all VHF. So they will stay on a dual band radio, but uh, the PDs will go to a, a single band radio. Um, right now, they're looking at quotes and we'll probably be getting them up on the air uh, starting sometime uh, mid to late uh, 2022. All right. Thanks a lot. Any uh, other questions for John? All right. Thank you very much for joining us. It was very informative, a whole different part of radio that I'm not familiar with. So it was very educational for me. Thank you for the invitation. I appreciate it very much. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night.